Meet the Matthewsons. They're a dynasty of dealers. It drives really well. With a love of classics. Ah, it's only condensation. Yeah. In Thornton the Dale, gateway to the North York Moors, they auction over 2,000 rare vehicles every year. 42,000 the ready type, the stunning car. All walks of life, the cars fetch people together. I'm ecstatic. Head of the family, Derek. It's got to be the best job ever, isn't it? We're sort of living a dream. Trusted lieutenants, sons Paul. Not everybody's cup of tea. And Dave. There's Dad's way. And there's Dad's way. <laughs> Keeping them all in check and dealing with the punters, Sarah. Somebody could ring today with some fabulous vehicle that's been sat in a barn for 50 years. You have no clue. It's the chase, it's fine then. So you get up every morning thinking, what am I going to find today? This is a family's love affair with cars that have lived a life. Someone's cherished a car and loved it, and I think it's just great. I think it's absolutely superb. A passion that can be turned into brass. Sale this week. Rolls Royce Silver Shadow, a beaut. 94 <laughs> Turbo R, Bentley, the red one out there, lovely vehicle. They're an enthusiast car, really. A driver's car, that's the only way to sum it up, really. A lot of dinkies, start me on that, where? Certainly 150 quid, 200 quid mm. in a box, probably more. Austin 7, Ulster Special, Little Sports 1930. Austin 7s, they were just like McCannels. I like all that's simple. Look at that, some beautiful stuff. We get very little chance to come to collections like this. I mean, it is recognised as a psychological problem, I think, really, to be fair. Grimsby in Lincolnshire. For 30 years, the home of businessman John Morton and his wife, Nada. John always liked best of British. He was British through and through, and I think that's why he liked Rolls Royce and he liked Bentley. He liked to make the life special. John made his money the hard way in reclaimed stone, but spent it on the finest cars that money could buy. He made his own money, and I think that's why it was all this, you know, Rolls Royce, because Rolls Royce would be uh, very much symbol, status symbol, wasn't it, you know? But when he passed away, he left behind three Rolls Royces, two Bentleys, and their many treasured memories. John used to take children every Sunday for a local ice cream shop. And they would take one car every week. They all enjoyed it and they all felt really great in a Rolls Royce or in a Bentley. He made it feel special. They need to go. These are the type of cars which you need to use. Some of them are 40 years old, more than 40. They can have another 40 years if they are taken care of and driven, if they will just sit in the garage or in the warehouse. That lifespan will be a lot shorter. Derek's arrived with his largest trailer, and it's not going to be big enough. Nice vehicles, really nice motors, a nice car, a Bentley Mulsane, this one. She spent a lot of money on this, I think 7,000 quid or something, getting it uh, back into decent condition. They're, um, they're an enthusiast car, really, a driver's car, that's the only way to sum it up, really. So they sell better. But rollers will always deliver their own unique retro luxury. Look at that, absolutely superb, really, really nice interior. As good as you're going to get that into. The unusual collection support team has finally turned up to help load the king-sized classics. It's just been a hobby that's gone balmy for him, really, I would think. Compulsive uh, collector, isn't he? And just of this particular model, and 
whatever floats your boat. Uh, I can I can see where where people like this are coming from because they are fabulous cars for the money. They're six, seven, eight thousand quid, aren't they? You could hardly buy a good Mondeo for that. Fuel's heavy, I know, but when you think of it, really, the value for money and the enjoyment you can get out of it, why not have a go? <laughs> Certainly, that's what he's done, isn't he? Good luck to him as well. He's enjoyed it, I would think. Rolls-Royce advertised their vehicles as the best car in the world. They were pretty confident about that, so didn't bother with the probably bit. The model for the flying lady was Eleanor Thornton, the muse of Baron Montague of Bewley. Their secret love was the equation for the car's emblem of perfection. Prices vary wildly on your choice of icon. A very classy Bentley S2 Continental cost around £5,000 in 1960, Today, you'd pay 150,000, maybe more. However, compare that to a Silver Spirit. For the 80s equivalent of 150,000, you would have a car that did 12 miles to the gallon with an optional decanter. Opulence you can now buy for around 5,000 pounds. John and Nada's luxury limos are now ready for viewings at Matthewson's HQ. It's taken four years for the family to come to terms with moving them on. When we go and pick the vehicle up, you know, there's, there's a little bit of sadness there very often, especially if they've had them five, six, ten years and, and really enjoyed them. No matter what vehicle it is, and, and no matter if it's been troublesome or they haven't used it for six or nine months, it's still a big thing for them to ring up and actually make that call and set the, the wheels in motion to move the car. Um, but once they've done that, you can see it's almost like a weight off of them. It's quite strange, really. Retired garage owner, Jonathan, is showing early interest in the Bentley Turbo R. It's my 70th birthday next month, so uh, this, something like this would be a, a perfect uh, way to celebrate that. <laughs> it's a beautiful looking thing. So uh, we can only see how much money it makes. Uh, but uh, uh, I'd certainly be interested in uh, getting some bids in for it, but whether I win the bids, we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> Richard is more impressed by the Rolls-Royce Silver Spirit from 1981. They're still the best car in the world, to be honest. Rolls-Royce, you know, Rolls-Royce, it's, it's the name, isn't it? Yeah, I love them. Bentley or Rolls. We'll soon find out which fares best at auction. Derek's back on the car hunt. With grandson Charlie, he's off to collect a 70s icon. But there's an extra treat in store. Well, where we're off to today, Charlie, is to see Andrew Hardy. He's a big collector. And his main building, apparently, where he keeps his collection, is something to behold. Really, really good. Over the past decade, Andrew has amassed this huge collection. He got the bug after a visit to the National Motor Museum. It started with the trip to Bewley for my 40th birthday and uh, just got hooked. The most important to me is the signs. To me, they like art and they're not getting made again. His personal collection has already outgrown two stories of a specially built extension. This just gets bigger and bigger, and I'm running out of space. Right then, let's go and meet Andrew. Derek's here to help him make some room. How are you, Andrew? <laughs> yeah, all right, mate. Hey, good, good to see you. Charlie, nice cheers, mate. Good to see you. Andrew's selling his 1971 Escort 1300 GT. A restoration project that's run out of steam. Yeah, it's the one to have, isn't it? Yeah. It's being modified underneath. Somebody's put a different tool into a different gearbox. Oh, all right, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. But the car will have to wait, as Derek makes a beeline for Andrew's museum. Guarding the collection, a tribute to the Dad's Army TV show. There you go, Charlie. Well, as promised. Dad's Army Jones' van. Dad's Army Jones's van. Fantastic, eh? Look at that. Just an absolute scaled down replica. Pull this lever here, I believe. Ready? There they go. <laughs> Out one, two, three. In one, two, three. Do you remember? 
and a vintage GPO Morris van, with everything you'd need to fix a 1960s party phone line. Wow, she's set up nicely, isn't she? Look at that, every bit of equipment. Isn't that brilliant? Wow. A bit nice. Yeah, Lovely condition as well, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you don't know what to look at next, do you? <laughs> look at this, Charlie. Oh, look at that. What is she, a little Villiers or some sort? Or something? It's a Villiers. Is it a Villiers? Yeah, uh, people taxed them and drove them in when the petrol rationing was on. Did they really? Yeah. They made 500 in 1938. So they actually put them on the road, did they? Put them on the road, yeah. Didn't know that. Nice. Right, little four. I like that. We get very little chance to come to collections like this. Gorgeous, isn't it? Absolutely lovely. He's done it in the most superb manner. Very, very crammed. Looks absolutely superb, in my opinion. It is recognised as, as, a, as a psychological problem, I think, really, to be fair. I think we're all a little bit balmy about it. But um, I think it's brilliant when guys appreciate this sort of stuff, um, amass it and put it on display to show guys like us. I think it's wonderful. Derek spent the morning eyeing up some plum memorabilia. Now he's got a deal to complete. It's the same shell as a, a Mexico yeah. or the RS2000, yeah. so again, I think that might end up as a, a Mexico or an RS2000, I don't know. Whatever it ends up, it'll go rallying, won't it? Yeah. There's almost no doubt about that. Yeah. yeah. Owner Andrew thinks his Escort 1300 GT is worth £7,000. Solid enough. It is solid sound, old thing, isn't it? The original engine has been replaced by a quicker 1600. Yeah. It's a good engine, it's a solid engine. Cross-flow, Charlie, you see? Inlet one side, out the other side. Exhaust. That's the engine they all want. Well. That's the one they want, yeah. They can tune them, them engines, to tremendous brake horsepower, yeah. can't they? Uh, tremendous brake horsepower. Yeah, lovely, just a job. It's a good turnout on auction day, with the Bentley and Rolls Royces about to go under the hammer. It's a later version, mm. isn't it? And this this piping looks quite good, doesn't it? That's all the way. It's the extra. Oh. Work, Somebody's looked after this, haven't they? Yeah. Peter is here with his grandson. He's owned three Bentleys in the past. No, it's very tidy, that. You get an awful lot of car for your money, because they're so floaty when you drive them. They're so soft and, and on the road and everything gets absorbed, you don't feel any bumps. I love the way they're made. Pure British craftsmanship, which is beautifully made cars. I like the way they drive. Um, it's really not in a hurry, of course. I just generally just love them. Justin restores and sells classic cars. Any Harrods bags in there, Justin? Uh, it should be a Ford and Mason's bag, you would think, wouldn't it? And he picks his projects wisely. The original toolbox is still here, which is nice to have. Is that where they keep them? And it's complete, which is good. It's nice. I like these Mulsan S's, actually. You need proper history files, you need correct mileage, and you need some sort of proof of mileage. Otherwise, you'll never sell them. Simple as that. Do you like Bentleys? Oh, I love them, yeah. Love them. I like the colour on this one as well. It's a nice colour. There's a network book there. Here we go. There's a service book. That's what we want to see. It might make it interesting and buyable. H.R. Owen, 22, Weybridge Automobiles, they're a proper Rolls Royce people, so that's good. I normally have a Turbo R, I haven't got one at the moment, so you never know. If it's cheap enough, we might put our hands up. 94 Turbo R, Bentley, the red one out there, lovely vehicle. Start me on it, where are we gonna be? 5,000 I've got, 5,001, 5,002, 3, 5,003, 4, 5,004, 5, 5,005, 6, 56, 57, 57, 58, 59 standing in the seats, 6,000 pounds, submit in 6,000 pounds, 1, 6,001, 6,200 in the seat, 62, 63, 6,004 down this end, 6,005, 6,006 in the seats, you're out, A, 6,007 back in, 8, 6,008, 69 is back in, 6,000, 7,000, 7,001, this side, 7,001, what do you think? Finished, 7,150, 7,150 the lady, 7,150, 7,2, 7,002 this side. 
7250. 7250 in the seats. 73, 7003, 7350. What do you think? 74, 7004 this side and on its way. 74, 7450. Back in. 75, 7500. 75, last time looking round. Are you sure for the first, second, third, and last time? Anthony, 75, thank you for your bidding. This is the first car I bought at auction. I've always fancied the Bentleys. I mean, why does a guy buy himself a Bentley? You know, whenever I see someone driving a Rolls Royce or a Bentley, I just think there's someone with some self confidence. So perhaps. Ah, I'm curious. I'm always curious to see the people who are driving them. They're never quite who I think they might be. But who do we know who we are, really? That's a deep philosophical question. Three more cars from John and Nada's collection go under the hammer. Bentley Mulsane, very cheap, good value. Where are we going to be? Five, five oh one, five, five two, five four, five four, five six, five eight, five thousand eight hundred. Sounds awesome. Five thousand eight hundred six. How can you value it? Six thousand pound worth every penny. Six thousand provisional. One thousand short of its reserve. Gold rolls, very unusual. The green leather, special order, 1976. Suits it, doesn't it? I think so. Looks lovely. Anyway, come on, 3,000, got it. 3,250, 35, lovely car. 3,750, 4, 4,000, 4,250, right in the corner, out down the middle. <laughs> Cheap car, if that comes, I'm sure it will. 4,250. 500 pounds short. Rolls Royce Silver Spirit, same stable, cracker, absolute cracker. Whereabouts? Four, 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 two, four, 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 six, four, six, four, eight, four thousand eight, four thousand eight hundred. Go in then. Provisional, four, eight, provisional only. That's just two hundred off the mark. Just one more luxury limo left to auction. 1975, Rolls Royce Silver Shadow, a beaut. Four, six, five, six, five, six. Look at it. Five, eight, five, eight, six, six thousand. On my left, six thousand. Submitting it, six thousand pound. On my left. Is there another hundred pound before we go? Six thousand. All the provisional bids were accepted, and dealer Rob is happy with his gold six thousand pound silver shadow. It's beautiful. Four others here today, five others. This was probably the best one. Um, it's an early car as well, and uh, yeah, prices are definitely on the rise. Colour's not everyone's cup of tea, but it's very fitting, very 70s. Um, the type of person that buys this is a little bit eccentric, a little bit loud, so you know, the gold's not, not, uh, not an issue at all. Next collection and Paul's heading north, far north, to a remote village. At the end of the road, turn left, then turn left. Nestled in the North Yorkshire countryside near Richmond, a beautiful 1935 Austin 7 Opal. I like Opal, that's simple. Owner, Gerald the Driver, has restored many classic 7s over the past 20 years. Austin 7s, they were just like Meccano's. You could have an engine out, strip it, repair it, and have it back in in two or three days, you know. Until the wonderful little 7 Austin just made big stuff, but the 7 changed everything. It was the making of the company. It took on the American Ford Model T, and with the assistance of the government, who brought in a helpful horsepower tax, the allegedly seven brake horsepower won the sales battle. With affectionate model names like Chummy, Speedy and Nippy, the seven won hearts and races. In modified form, they helped give birth to Lotus and McLaren. Above all, the baby Austin gave motoring to the masses. It was cheap, pretty reliable and easy to fix. Picnics, family holidays and happy memories. Morning, Gerald. Morning, How are you? Then. Oh, I'm How are you keeping? You're well. looking fit. Yeah, I'm pretty good. No, oh, well done. Right, this is it. A little Austin, eh? Yeah. You've been painting it? I haven't done wings. Right. Uh, but I've done the blue. 
Not a bad looking little car really, is it? It goes well. I mean, we've done a few long distance rallies on it. So. Have you? Oh, uh, oh good. well. Anyway, it's long distance from here though, isn't it? Well, <laughs> yeah. by the time you find a road, you've done a long distance in one of these. <laughs> when it's cold, if you've parked it, prime it. Yes. You know, it's bang under yeah. petrol pipe there. Yeah, they're all there, aren't they? Yeah, full choke, no foot on accelerator, and uh, where she goes. Much as Gerald loves these cars, he's decided to opt for something more forgiving. Sitting down is not my favourite thing to do. I spend most of my life stood up, so if you're sitting down on a long journey, it's uncomfortable. Sounds sweet enough, Gerald. Yep. Yeah. Yes, you are. Come on, come on. Anywhere there. Is that it? Yep, that'll do. Brakes on. Yep, and in gear if you would. Very sad to see it go, you know, and uh, end of an era, but uh, uh, there you go, you can't have everything forever, can you? So, yeah, ah, very sad, very sad. As the car heads off to be prepared for auction, Yorkshireman Gerald has a parting wish. I'd like to see £7,000. That's what I'd like to see. Paul's arrived back at base with another familiar classic. Although he seems to have become head of Austin Sevens, he's probably not the best person for the job. I don't really understand quite what the appeal is with the little Austins. They're, uh, they're dreadfully underpowered, wandery steering, uh, lack of synchro mesh in the gears, but they're cute, aren't they? They're pretty, which I assume is why people love them to bits, you know? But it wouldn't be for me to run around in, I'm afraid. Ah, uh, they're just that bit too old and slow and compact. A picnic basket, look. It must be for a family, I think. Look at the size of it. Poor little Austin's nearly overweight with that in, isn't it? They're popular, you know. The only trouble is with, with all this early stuff, the people that can relate to them are ageing. Uh, so um, there will become a day when they're really museum pieces because nobody really understands them and doesn't understand how to drive them as well, of course. Um, so uh, I think their, their, their lifespan, as we know it, is possibly a little limited, really. But there is one person on site who does understand them. I had a big seven. Is that a big seven? That is a big seven, yeah. I had a big seven. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't a very good car to car. No, no. no. <laughs> nah, I could get in the back. <laughs> Ex bank manager and engineer Jeffrey, also known as Bubbles, is a volunteer at Matthewson's. I think I paid about, uh, in old money, £12, 10 shillings for mine. And you'd run it as young lads. And then when it went wrong or the engine blew up, which it would do because we had no respect for them in those days, um, take it to the scrapyard, get a couple of quid for it and go buy another one or buy something different. A big seven like this is now worth about £5,000. There's a lot of interest in them. You know, modern cars, they all look the same to me, but these have got a bit of character. They're good fun. I wouldn't want to go to London in it, <laughs> but I wouldn't mind I'd go to York in it quite happily. It might take me all day to get there, and I might wonder whether I'm going to get back or not, but I would take it. With the auction just around the corner, we'll soon find out if anyone, other than Bubbles, is still interested in these cute classics. Number 47, a lovely, quirky little thing there. It's the Singer Sign Machine tractor. Every month, Derek auctions off lots of old toys. Selling 52. Nostalgic. We only wanted the Wallace and Gromit one, but the others are fun. Do you like cheese? Uh, yes, actually, I do. And collectible. Oh, they're getting better all the time. The dinky Americans, lovely little lot. 75 pounds. You've got your Mark three, three Mark three cardings. What I've had a few when I was younger. Loved them them days. Box all Novas. You Caprice. I prefer to look at one or two in the boxes 
and then will you get home and have, a, have another better look and you either get a really nice surprise or you think I've just bought a load of rubbish. I think so, uh, your Jacksons, your minis. At home, I think I've got about, realistically, I think this day I was looking for about 500 cars, corgis and dinkies. The company has its own dinky toy expert, Derek's grandson, Charlie. I suppose I just got a few given off of my dad and then I just clicked and then I started collecting them. He's even got his own showroom. They're different, aren't they? I mean, it's the shapes that get me on the classic. Just the shape of the moderns are just bland and they have all these stupid little air holes cut into them and stuff. Whereas the classics are just normal. Like these, these are these are really nice, just because they're matching pairs. They're both Austin vans and they're both off Austin of England service, which is different. And you don't get much of these because these are rare. I do like this one, it's nice. This is an old AEC, Eddie Stobart lorry, that would have been used in, oh, uh, what do you say? 50s, 60s? At the real showroom, it's a passion shared. Beautiful works of art, aren't they? Just like enamel signs. Absolutely superb. Look at the picture on that. With windows, so oh, plastic yeah. plastic windows. Should we have a look? Carefully have a look. Oh, look at that. There you are, with oh, windows. Yeah. Oh, springs. There you are. Yeah, that's sprung. like my Winnie Wood. Fully Winnie sprung. Woody at home. Fully sprung, look. Superb. They were about three and six when they were new. Um, well, no, that's what I was paying for them, about three and sixpence. Um, but today, probably you're talking of thick end of a hundred quid a box. More money uh, for the commercials because stuff like eight wheelers like that with the chains, very unusual. Certainly 150 quid, 200 quid mm. in a box, probably more, 300 quid probably in a box, mint condition. So there's some quite valuable bits and pieces. When auction day comes around, if Charlie wants them, he has to bid for them like everyone else. And he spotted a rare dinky. This one, because you never, you might see them as a flatbed, but you never ever, never, literally never, see them with these, this back on, never. And especially with all the stickering on as well. I'll have a bid, hopefully buy it. Uh, 160, lot of dinkies, the dinky ones here, start me on that, where 40, 45, 50, 55, 55, 55 pounds, 60, 65, 65, 65 pounds, 70, 70, 75, 75, 80, 80 pound, 85, 85 pound, are you all done, 85, 85. Sold to Charlie. I got nice bits, that that that, that, that's yeah. unusual. So you're happy? Yeah, I'm happy. I couldn't be any happier. There are two Austin 7s going into this month's auction. Paul's not so keen on them, so he'll be pleased there's a more modern classic on its way to the garage. Derek, he knows everything about everything. Really? Yeah. Two of you, then. <laughs> <laughs> David Chappell, along with his wife and their friends, He's having a ride out in his high-powered pride and joy. This is a 1989 Sierra Cosworth four-wheel drive. Absolutely immaculate. It's done 16,000 miles from new. That's over 30 years. And this is the first time it's been out this year. Derek has one of his own in his private collection, but it's not as good as this. It's so forgiving. Mm. If, you, if, it, if it twitches, it doesn't have to straighten up very quickly. Mm. Mm. No, it's gorgeous, yeah. David thinks the Cosworth is worth around 30 grand. That'll, du that'll double in two years' time. Yeah, I know, it's daft, isn't it, you know? But he's not here to sell it. A few days ago, he brought in the car he does want to auction. It's another Austin 7, but it's very rare. It's a, a 1933 Austin Ulster. It's a replica body on an Ulster chassis. I liked it, but I didn't like it. I couldn't get anything out of it. But it's a lovely little car. I used it a couple of times and then I stored it. There's no hood for them. So basically you put a Mac on. David sold his chain of fish and chip shops a few years ago and invested heavily in what he hopes are appreciating classics. I've got a, a 1920 Studebaker, which I bought from Australia. It's soft top. 
I have a Hillman Minx 1933 Aero, which is up in Durham having all the wood body done. I have an SS1 1933. I have an XJS tw uh, V12. I have a Mark II. David has a lot of cars. And this one will appeal to motorsport fans, especially hill climb racers. You've got amp meter speedo, oil gauge, and a timepiece. The petrol tank is in the rear, the spare boot is in there, where you put the tourner key. The exhaust is a, more or less a straight through exhaust. It's been extensively modified. A very different machine to the standard Austin 7. That's your regulator for your dynamo. You've got electronic ignition down there. This is your oil, this is your fuel pump, which is non-standard. That's an SU carburetor. This car will do 60, 70 mile an hour easy. The first of the sevens to go under the hammer is the 1935 model, restored by Gerald. Uh, leads us on to a lovely little car, a little Austin 7 Opal. Start me on that, 1935, lot number 119. Whereabouts? Come on, where are we going to be? 4,500, 4,6, 4,7, 4,007, 4,8, 4,9, 4,900, 4,9, 4,900, 4,9. Go in then, 4,900 is the five. 4,900 last time, 4,9. 1,600 pounds off the mark. Paul's hunch about a limited market for this car seems correct. 1937 Austin Big 7. What's it worth? Where do you want to be? Come on, start me off. Is it three? £3,000 for the Austin. Three, come on, start me off. £3,000. Three, three, two, three, four, three, four, three, six, three, eight. Three thousand eight going then. Three thousand eight hundred for the seven. Three thousand eight four I've got. Four thousand pound. Are you sure you're all done? Four thousand pound. Four thousand pound provisional. A tad short of reserve, but enough. The car is sold. But there's more interest in the Ulster Sport. Dealers Rob and Mark have spotted it and can see potential profit. Yeah, it's got all new control box. It's been bought up to date, hasn't it? Got amazing oil pressure, really, really strong. I can't help but think it's the wrong colour. I just, to me, it's not a 30s colour. I'd, I'd want to rub it back to metal and have it as aluminium. We've seen them, haven't we, in that colour before? A little bit hammered, a little bit dented in places. And then I suppose you could clear coat it or something. It's just, it's cool, isn't it? And these little Ulster body cars are, you know, are going up a bit now as well, so. It's the sort of thing you just fix on the side of the road, isn't it? And keep going. It's great. You've got to find somebody just wants one that they can pull out the garage and use and have some fun in. But it certainly put a smile on your face. A good car, but a heftier price. It's up shortly with a reserve of £10,000. It's auction day and the memorabilia is flying off the shelves. Yeah, I've grown out of cars and motorbikes. Bicycles take a lot less room up. Do you like wearing Lycra on a weekend? I do actually, yeah. yeah. So what have you bought then? We bought a, um, an ornamental pump for the garden um, to be, give the dogs a drink. Harriet and Mabel. How much did you pay for it? Ten. That don't break it. A man can't have enough duct tape. I haven't any ducks. But next on the block, a very rare classic. Austin 7, Ulster Special, Little Sports 1930, fabulous little thing. Nine, 9,000 we're off, 9,000, 9,002, 94, 96 here, selling then, 9,008, 9,008, 10,000, 10,000 pound, 10,000, worth more, 10,000, 102, 10,200 in the hall, and on sale, 10,200. 10,002, 10,004, 10,406, 10,006, worth 12, 10,8, 10,008, on the phone, 10,008, 11, 11,2, 11, 11,002, 11,2, 11, and selling, 11,4, he's going to have it, 11,4, he's going to drive it home, 11,400, standing, 11,4, 11,6, 11,2, 11,2, 11, 6, on the phone, 11,6, 8, 
11 8. He's got the advantage, he's seen it. 11,008, what do you think? 12, I thought it would do it. 12, 12,000 on the phone. 12,000, 12,000 and going. What do you think? 12, 2, 12,200. 12,002, thank you very much for his bidding. Thank you. 12,002, well done. Thank you very much, sir. Just the job. 9459, thank you. Proper things make proper money. Over £2,000 above reserve. The highest bidder, Peter Clark. Been looking for one for a while. Not something that was all polished and pristine because you never use those, do you? I had one a long, long time ago when I was a student, which is uh, 50 years ago, nearly. I thought I'd done well. I bought it for 20 quid and sold it for 120 a year later. So slightly different prices now. There's quite a few things that aren't quite right about it, but it's a, it's a good basis to, uh, to improve. Not a major project, not another lifetime's work. I've been through that cycle. And, uh, you get to an age where you think, I may never finish this once, so we'll start from here. At the smart end of North Yorkshire, there's a hint of aristocracy, as Anthony Tubbs admires his recently delivered £7,500 Bentley Mulsan Turbo that he bagged at the auction. Absolutely love it. The colour combination is fantastic. Polished veneer, walnut, all the fittings. Um, lovely comfortable in the back. Our children bought me that lovely rug when they were in Edinburgh not so long ago. I just think the proportion is just stunning. It's just absolutely stunning. The combination is just a winning one for me. I don't think I've ever seen anyone so happy with a car. Like <laughs> Anthony runs a haulage business, so his children are more used to being ferried around in a truck. A leather lounge on wheels is a rare treat. <clears throat> now, where are we going today? Should we go to the pub? <laughs> well, uh... Perhaps a bit later, Henry. Do you think it's a bit early yet? Yeah. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. The children are overjoyed. Great curiosity. I think uh, they've all entered into the spirit of it. Jesse, all right in the back? Yeah. Good. So who do you imagine when you're driving in the back? Uh, queen. Queen. Is that how you feel? Yeah. yeah. Smooth, powerful. You just have that sense that if you wanted to push it, it would dig in strong road holding, a lot of fun. That's what it's about. After Derek and Charlie collected the 1971 Ford Escort 1300 GT, it was down to Paul and Dave to prepare it for auction. Dreadfully, that's just my luck, that is. They both raced classic fast Fords. Competition lads love them, don't they? They're still still very good, aren't they? Now, you know, very competitive. It's ridiculous, really, isn't it? You know, when you think how old they are and why they should be so good, nobody really knows. It's just down to weight distribution, I think, balance. Even today, put them up against some turbocharged four-wheel drive stuff and they're still there, aren't they? You know, they still finish in and amongst that group, don't they, you know? Fabulous, really, isn't it? You can't see anything, though. Yeah. This sort of thing generate a lot of interest then. Should do, mate, yeah. They're not on every street corner anymore. Ford Escort 1300 GT 1971. Going to make a, a very nice rally car for somebody, this one. Start me on that. Whereabouts? I want five to start. Come on, there's the five to start. There's no point in going on. 5,000 anywhere. 5,000 all we'll pass on it. Is the five. 5,000 anywhere. Nope, there's not, so we'll pass on that. No sale. But a week later, retired boatyard owner Richard offered 6,000 for it, which was accepted. Interior-wise, I quite liked because the back seats are all original and there's no rips, they're all good. The steering wheel needs replacing, that wants put him back to stop, but you can buy all the bits. It's now back at his home near York, where it's joining a queue of restoration projects. Every single car I have is something that I wanted when I was in my 20s. We've got a Lamborghini Araco, uh, 1973. Fence post rear axle, not fitted as standard. 
it's just my sort of thing, you know, classic lines. He's got a 1978 Porsche 911 SC. I just love the old technology. And there's also a Ferrari 308, the model made famous by 80s detective show Magnum P.I. I go out with it every now and again, but I don't use it a lot, to be fair. Just for your private investigation work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Escort was a must-have for the collection. It was my first car. When I passed my test, I had a Mark I Escort, ran it for about eight months. It filled its MOT, and that was the last time. Um, and I always thought, I fancy one back again. He's even managed to get it going. Sweet is enough. As for the Austin 7 Ulster, it's now in the care of new owner Peter Clark, and he hasn't kept to his plan. I originally said I will just keep it and look at it for a bit. And then, as you can see, it was only about a fortnight before it was up on the ramp and spreading bits everywhere. Well, this is the modified front dampers. These are split into two parts rather than the original one, which was a single one. Uh, we'll give a, a whole lot better damping and uh, a less roll than the original would have. Peter has owned, maintained and renovated many cars over the years. This was his first Austin 7. My connection goes back to the 1950s and 60s when there were a lot of Austin 7s around as cheap cars and also uh, people built specials, lots of people built specials, which of course is, is what this is really. One of the things I've done is get hold of a set of wheels. Hopefully they'll look a bit better because I thought the original ones didn't look right. Um, we've moved the battery into the boot. And then silly little things like this. The lights were on a bit of tin bracketing. I decided to design and make a light that looked 1930s. Whether you think it does or not, I don't know. Very much the car for the man in the shed. You can do everything yourself. So it's a car that's pretty easy to maintain. That said, Peter is more qualified than most to do the job. My background is engineering. I'm a mechanical engineer by training. Some people enjoy driving them. Some people particularly enjoy the social thing. I mostly enjoy the tinkering, the restoring, particularly rescuing something which might not be here if people like me didn't decide they were going to uh, bring it back to life. But do spare a thought for Peter's family. My wife has uh, tolerated it for many years and remembers the original one. Uh, my daughter has uh, yeah, come, to, uh, come to accept that's just what Dad does.